maths and art. My father's a maths teacher, my mother's an artist, so I have always had a kind of interest um, also in, in history, like personally, my, my interest apart from those two was, was history. So um, I always found uh, like these kind of constant, these constant threads of like the, the kind of mathematical world and the art world and, and the kind of social context of, of both of those things. And so when I um, had to choose what to study at university, uh, architecture seemed to be the subject that really um, captured everything that I was really interested in. In my first year of architecture school I discovered architecture magazines and I didn't know they existed before and there was this guy who was like writing about architecture in like Switzerland one week and then the next week he seemed to be in Japan and the week after that he seemed to be um, you know in the Netherlands and so I thought about um, a career as a writer as somebody who observed architecture and also kind of connected ideas together and, and, um, and not just described a building but also really brought together uh, what that building means and represents so so I guess that was that was how I got interested in um, in the culture of architecture as opposed to the kind of building of architecture, um, and that's something I think that I kind of carried carried with me through the through my career. Well, I started with um, internships. Um, when I was uh, in my first year of architecture, I also was writing about music. I was like writing fanzines about my favorite bands, <laughs> writing really bad reviews about them. Um, so I applied to be an intern at um, Building Design, which is the weekly newspaper of, of architecture in England. And I, I then did another internship at the BBC, at Wallpaper, at Days and Confused. Um, basically any kind of like volunteering experience I got, I took it. And then I got the job at Icon, which was probably the first proper full-time job I had in, in architecture writing. It was a great um, kind of journalistic experience for me to work there um, and a great way to meet the most important people in architecture because we got to them every week, uh, every month. My first job as a curator was uh, in China, um, so that was completely um, life-changing, really. Because I'd never worked as a curator before, I kind of understood vaguely what a curator might be, but I didn't really understand what it could be in the context of architecture. And that, that was kind of an exciting process for me to go from writing about architecture and, and talking about architects, about what they have done, to the idea of maybe I could be the person that makes the things that they do and I could commission them to do things. That was, that was a great opportunity and, and it really tested um, the relationship between architecture in the city and, and the idea of the temp temporal architecture as something which has, um, which has a weight, it has a capacity, it's not just something kind of vague and ephemeral and passive, but it can, can be really powerful to have something temporary. And, uh, and of course the experience of living in China uh, was just so radical and so incredible um, that I kind of felt pretty invincible when I came back uh, because it just felt like if you could kind of do that, you can pretty much do anything. like requests came from can you work at Milan Design Fair would you be interested in, in looking at design and because I hadn't done very much with design apart from with architecture I was thinking about well how can we make an exhibition about design in the context of Milan Design Fair which is a very conventional um, manufacturing commercial environment and um, I just found uh, the idea of doing something about hacking and performance and the idea of like picking up on a trend in, in design, like the idea that people are adapting what they're doing, not necessarily um, accepting the idea of uh, a kind of, um, of, of objects that, that, that no longer kind of have a kind of defined lifespan. Welcome to man versus machine. In the, in the man corner, we have Dominic Wilcox. In the machine corner, we have Deep Pink. We did 
a race between a 3D printer and um, a guy, like making making um, out of clay. Um, they had this kind of race that was almost like a boxing match, um, and they like the 3D printer guys had like you know their um, their robes on, and Dominic Wilcox had his robe on, and they were kind of fighting like who could get the the um, the cathedral made first, one in a, one out of a 3D printer and one out of a block of clay. <laughs> In 2011 I worked with, um, well, Ai Weiwei was the chief curator with Sung Yeo Sang um, and then halfway through the process of um, curating the Biennale he was put in prison. So we stopped working with Ai Weiwei in, in April of that year. For me as a curator it was a really special experience to work on that exhibition because it, um, it also gave me a lot of inspiration for, for, for this show. Um, like what is architecture and can we expand what architecture could be in, in the same way. And during that show I commissioned this work called the Wiki House, which was a downloadable house, um, which then went on to, to actually be a real product um, and really, really work and become something much more than um, an exhibition piece. And so for me, the, the process of working on that show um, gave me the idea that, the, that exhibitions can, can actually be like seeds and, and, and opportunities to test ideas which can really work and, and like to invest, in, to invest in people rather than like to ask them to like bring some stuff they did before and that kind of thing. So yeah, it was a, it was a, really, good, a really good experience. Close Closer um, is an exhibition or a series of exhibitions which tries to reframe architecture and architectural discourse. So moving away from the idea of architecture as a series of buildings and designs um, into a much broader, more expansive architectural culture. We have these associated projects, people funding stuff on Kickstarter, people like, we're coming, you know, with my, you know, whatever kind of suitcase full of stuff in the EasyJet flight and we're coming and we're going to do something and um, we want to be part of it. So I think it's going to have a kind of um, kind of festival feel in that sense that actually we're just going to do it anyway. It's made out of three main exhibitions and one public programme. We're also putting on a, a number of competitions and open calls to engage with the public. Instead of having a um, all of our talks in theatres and conference halls, we are having all of our public programme in public space in squares around uh, Lisbon. And we have people coming from Mexico, institutions in Mexico City, institutions in New York City, institutions um, from all over Europe actually, like really great ones, who are um, who kind of see the Trinal and see the exhibition of the Institute effect as something they want to participate in. And so there is a kind of community feel um, around some of the programming, um, which is great because it means um, we have, you know, we've made something that people think is exciting and we've made something that people want to be part of. <laughs>